<laughs> good to yeah. get you. Good to get you back on. Like, no, yeah. there's no doubt at all. Uh, Nigel Farage, your honorary president, not standing as a candidate. He's making a big play of this being the immigration election. He's challenged uh, Rishi Sunak to a live TV debate. Look, he, you know, that's not going to happen on that issue. For a start, Nigel Farage isn't the leader of your party, and secondly, he's not even standing to be an MP. So I don't know why he has any particular right to debate the prime minister over. Frankly, me asking for that debate. But um, why do you think this is an I immigration election? I think you do election? brilliantly. I I'd think love you to do, do it, brilliantly I'd love in to that do it. debate. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, there are multiple problems facing the country. And if you've heard me speak more broadly on our political philosophy at reform, you will know that I'm in politics because I believe the United Kingdom faces existential threats, actually, at multiple levels, economic, cultural, uh, democratic and constitutional, every single level, I think our country is under pressure. But there is a common thread that goes between the four headings I've just given you, and that is uh, rampant immigration. Let's just get one thing straight, first of all. Reform UK is not against um, migration to the extent that it helps the United Kingdom in its, uh, you know, to, to, to be a prosperous country. But we are completely against the kind of levels of immigration that we've had over the last 25 years and which are tearing not just at our uh, social fabric but are tearing at our economy you know we simply haven't got the places for housing we can't uh, accommodate people for the burdens on the nhs infrastructure education and actually what we've done is turned the united kingdom into a low cost third world economic sort of model uh, taking all pressure off industry to upskill and automate and indeed undercut British wor workers into the bargain. So the immigration issue is not, it's not monocellular, if you like. It's not one thing. It has an impact right across our economy, right across the United Kingdom and including our, our, our you know, our nation state. And so I think that's why you know, we're really focusing on the immigration issue. Okay. And, and, and it's, and it's both legal about. and illegal. Now, last time you were on, um, I mean, this caused quite a big storm, didn't it? And, and we, pr we promised to get you on again. But again, I'm sure it's been a short notice just here. So I'd like to have a longer conversation with you about this. But you talked about how after channel migrants had died um, in, in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in the channel, um, including a child crossing the channel. And, and you said, look, we need to basically be pushing these boats back, just refusing to accept them. And basically you can offer them another boat, but then you have to go back to France. And, and I, you said, let's not infantilise these people. They have free will. And I basically said, what if, would you actually going to, you know, leave people to drown? And you said, I'm not going to be held to ransom by their claim that they deserve a protection as soon as they get into our territorial, territorial waters. They have to suffer the consequences of their actions. Do you still stand by that? So... The, the discussion you you and I had um, was a hypothetical discussion, which, uh, by the, the way, in the context I reject, of people just dying. Yeah, but of course I don't. I don't. I, I said if they were stupid enough and willfully self harming themselves to the extent that they would actually get a knife out. I should have asked you where they got this uh, hypothetical knife, but they get a knife out and they stab their dinghy so that they fall in the water. I said, give them another boat. And when we discussed the subject further in the interview later on, I said, well, you can give them multiple boats. I mean, actually, you were asking me to come up with solutions to hypothetical <laughs> aim of these people to harm themselves willfully, no matter what. <laughs> and, you know, oh, you've got Howard, I think. I see Howard on the screen. Um, and... Oh. Um, uh, I'm and, sorry um, about that. Um, oh, oh, no, um, okay. Can, for, for some reason, Howard, can we get, can we, should we should move Howard off? Because I want to carry on my conversation with Ben Habib, please. Ben. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, one other solution you could have, uh, I don't want, I, I, and I don't want to get caught in a hypothetical position with you, but one other solution you could have is take these people who keep producing knives and slashing their own dinghies put them in a dinghy, handcuff them and take them back to France. Make sure they go back to France where they came from. And there is real precedent for this, not just the Australian model, but Belgium has adopted exactly the same approach with drones, okay. sensors, fast boats, intercepting boats. They've reduced the number of launches from their beaches by 92% over five years using that physical process. So it, it and can no work. one, and no, and nowhere, no one, Julia, has produced a life and stabbed their own dinghy. They've gone back. 
You know, these people that, no, are not suicidal that's... bombers. They're, they, they're coming to the UK because they're aspirational. They're economic not migrants. You and I know that. You and I know they're economic migrants. By definition, they're economic migrants because they're safe in France. They're safe in France. Their security and their human rights are assured in France. So they're only coming here to better their lot, which flies in the face of the, uh, of the, of the likelihood of them we, we, okay. you know, wishing to have a very close call with very cold waters in the North Sea. Do you, do you have any faith that any of this, any of the parties, look, you know, there's lots of talk about how reform, if you do well, uh, you can uh, actually, you'll take, you'll take a load of seats, which will take a load of votes from both Tories and Labour, interestingly, but you could actually leave Labour winning an extra 100 seats, possibly, uh, taking them from the Conservatives. Um, do you have any faith at all that any of the other political parties running for the election will take this issue as seriously as it's obviously is the case that Reform UK takes this issue? No, I don't think they do. I don't think the other the other parties, look, let's just be clear. The other parties are basically globalist. The agendas adopted by the other parties don't put it, British national interest first. They put some sort of notion of globalism first, which is why they don't care about immigration, because frankly, who cares whether you're a British citizen or not if you don't actually believe in the United Kingdom. Um, we know Starmer doesn't believe in the United Kingdom. We know that Starmer would rather be in the EU, have a second referendum to get us back in there. When asked whether he would be at, rather be at Davos or Westminster, he said he'd rather be at Davos. We know that Starmer buys completely into the net zero agenda and would spend even more British taxpayers' money uh, in economically self-harming ourselves. You know, I mean, it's a complete disaster what Starmer will do. But the Conservatives are exactly the same. Rishi Sunak, when he put the deadline back from 2030 to 2035 for internal combustion engines mm -hmm. and for, you know, gas boilers, he didn't change any of the domestic legislation that penalises you in the event you haven't done it earlier. Yeah. And, so we're still you know, going to be dealing with it all. And, and, and again, the Labour have doubled down on all of that with earlier deadlines. I'm going to have to leave it there. I so appreciate you stepping in, Ben Habib. I don't know what's happened there with Howard Cox. Uh, but Ben Habib is a deputy leader of Reform UK. So appreciate your time. Thank you so much.